Hey, congratulations. This is Tony from Micro Center. You've decided to build your own computer. This is going to be a lot of fun. Now, what we're going to do is tell you a couple of mistakes we've seen people make so you don't make them while you're building your first PC. Want all the fun of picking the parts but none of the work? Let us build it for you. Heat's the number one killer of all computers, and we'll talk about heat sinks later. But let's talk about plain old fans. Pretty simple, really. Cold air in from the bottom front, out through the top, in the back. Oh, by the way, keep that side paddle on. That's key to correct airflow throughout the case. Current computer drives use a technology called SATA. One drive connects to one cable to one port on the board. Much simpler and much less prone to error than the previous type of drive technology called IDE. The small connector on the right is for data, the larger connector on the right is for power. Both are needed for the drive to operate correctly. If you are using the older IDE drives, the jumper, shown as a white piece of plastic, is key. It determines whether the drive is set as master, slave, or cable select. This is needed because the cable that connects them actually connects two drives to the computer. And most of the drive errors we see with this type of drive have to do with an incorrect setting of that little piece of plastic. Check your computer specs for the type of memory your computer takes, DDR3, DDR2, DDR, whether it's a DIM or so DIM module, and the maximum amount of memory your computer will take in each of the memory slots. Most boards have two, some have groups of three, some have four. All memory sticks have a little notch in them to help you position them correctly in your computer. The notch looks like it's in the middle of the stick, but it's not really. It's off-center by a bit. Don't try to force it. You'll only break the memory stick, break the motherboard, or otherwise cause damage to your computer. A little bigger than the size of a quarter is the processor chip for your computer. And this seems to be where most people have most of the problems they uh, run into in a build your own. First off, they seem a little freaked out by having to deal with it since it is the actual heart and soul of your whole computer. But let's see if we can demystify that for you a bit. Believe it or not, one common mistake we've seen people make is they've taken the heat sink out, here the, uh, on the left, the big fan looking thing, attached it to their motherboard and not quite sure why their computer hasn't been running. Some people have also, unfortunately, thrown the processor chip out rather than insert it on the motherboard. Remember, it's that little square that's the key to the whole operation. Here we see the bottom side of the processor, and as you can see, there are no pins to bend anymore, but that doesn't mean that people haven't forced them in wrong or made other mistakes. Before you try to put the processor on the motherboard, take a moment. Look for that little gold triangle. Also the two notches on the side. Really, these things only fit in one way and they drop in fairly smoothly. If you're forcing it, trying to figure out how to get it to fit, spinning it around a couple of times, stop, take it out, look for those markings. One common mistake when mounting the heat sink is not having all four of the connectors firmly attached to the board. Believe it or not, we've seen lots of computers come in with three of them firmly implanted, one of them a little bit loose, and that generates just enough of a space to generate just enough heat to have your computer shut down intermittently. If your heat sink didn't come with some thermal paste on it already, as the previous one did, you'll need to get a tube of thermal paste and Apply a nice thin coat on the top of the processor so that when you mount the heat sink on top of it, you've kind of filled in all the little gaps and air holes that uh, contribute to thermal buildup on the processor itself. And if this is obvious to you, I apologize, but the thermal paste does not go inside the socket. Yes, we've seen it, and all it does is make a mess, ruining the board and the processor as well. One other thing, that little black piece of plastic that guards the socket while in transit, remove it, 
hang on to it, but don't put it back in. Don't put thermal paste on it. Don't put the heat sink on top of it. Yes, we've seen that too. We're almost there. It really boils down now into plugging the right things into the right spot, making sure that you know where those right spots are, and not missing some of the obvious connections that people have, uh, have missed in building their own machines, whether it was their first time or their hundredth machine. The main power connector used to be 20 pins. Now on most boards it's 24. Well, what happens if you buy a power supply with a 24 pin connector but your older board is only 20 pins? Well, they break apart. Most people don't realize this and spend a lot of time trying to either figure out how to jury rig it or coming back to exchange it when they've already got what they need in. Everybody always finds the main power connector. It's pretty simple. It's the only one of its size. It's usually on the edge of the board. What does everyone miss when they're hooking up the power connectors to their board? So what's the one most people miss, whether it's their first machine or their hundredth? It's that little four pin or on the newer board, eight pin. A uh, power connector on the motherboard that provides power for all of the options on the motherboard, like video. So the machine's powering up but no video? Check this connector first. It's a fairly easy one to identify in the bundle of power connectors. Four pins or eight pins again, half of which are yellow, half of which are black wires. There are a lot of other power connectors that look similar, so make sure you're finding the right connector for the right spot on the board. Again, four pins and eight pins usually are the auxiliary power for the board. Six pins are usually power supplies for high-end video cards. But check your power supply manual, your options manual, and your motherboard manual. Everything's connected, but you still can't get it to turn on. Go back to the owner's manual and see which of those pins really is the on-off button. You should be able to short those with a small screwdriver and get the machine to turn on. That's also a way of diagnosing whether your front panel switch is working properly or not. Forgetting to put the brass standoffs between the motherboard and the case is the number one problem we see. Not only do people forget to put them in, but they put in a few extra, meaning that they're shorting out parts of the circuit board that really don't need a standoff. Double check that you've got as many as you need, no more, no less. It also provides support for the board. It's always a lot easier to build a computer when someone's not watching, and even easier if someone's not recording your every mistake. But let's take a crack at it anyway. So we've put the board on a non-conductive surface. We've gently placed the processor in. Again, it just fits right in smoothly. There should be no uh, no forcing of the processor. A little effort to get the spring to hold it down. There's already thermal paste on our heat sink. So the hardest part is going to be making sure that we get all four of those supports in to the board as well as the power supply for the heat sink fan connected to the CPU connector on the board, CPU fan connector on the board. Yes, they take a little effort to press in, and the first, first or second time you'll do it, you feel like you may be going to snap something, but after a while you just realize that it's a tight fit and you need to get all four in. Double check to see that they're protruding from the rear of the board, and that there's a firm feel to the heat sink on the computer. Memory again, lining up the notch on the stick of memory. And then, if we've done it all right, it should post power on self-test outside of the case. At this point, you're ready to start mounting your computer parts inside the case, adding your hard drives, loading your operating system, and using your computer. We well, hope this has helped. Again, this is Tony from Micro Center. Good luck and happy building.